Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I just wanted to talk a little bit about my new interest in DMR radio. Apparently it has caused a lot of waves out there. There's a lot of people that are like, oh my God, digital, you connecting to the internet to talk to people and they're like, oh, you can't do that. I've had people actually say, I'm unsubscri unsubscribing from you. And it's like, relax guys, relax, okay? Let me explain. So many years ago, I moved to St. Louis from Chicago area. And there was a <laughs> there was a demonstration on DMR or digital radio. I don't remember what it was that much. I'm like, so this guy gave a presentation on digital radio and it was connecting to repeaters. And I'm like, oh, that's cool. That's interesting, but not right now. Okay, I'm like, not right now. So what? I don't care. So you're doing digital, analog. I don't really care. So years, years and years ago, but I, I never forgot that though. So years go by and I'm, I'm still interested in it, but I'm interested in everything. When I first became a ham, I remember walking into the club and they were like, you can do all these things. You can do local, you can do HF, you can, you can connect to people across the world. I talk to Europe, I do CW, I do Earth Moon, I do a scan TV, I do all these things. And I'm like, ooh, I'm thinking, I wanna do it all, right? I wanted to do it all. And the, even one guy was like, in my club, he was like, relax, Tom, relax, you're gonna do it all. Just slow down, enjoy the hobby, do one thing at a time. And so recently, uh, someone someone reached out to me and said, I will get, we were gonna give you a radio, okay? And it was this one right, this one right here, the TID digital radio. So they said, which radio do you want? I'm like, digital. Like, I wanna try that out, I wanna see what it's like. So when you think about why do you have repeaters? Why do you have a local repeater connected to you? Now I'm talking to people that are new hams. If you've been a ham for a long time, you probably already know why you have repeaters. But more than anything, I use local repeaters for the weather and storm reports. So when there's a, a weather net, there's like a storm, there's a storm out usually. And I'm, I participate in that, uh, tracking storms, especially at tornadoes. So when there's a storm in the area, especially in the Midwest, you want to track it and you want to hear the best, most in best information you will get are spotters on the ground from your local repeater. Now let's stay analog, okay? Because that's where I got started. So this is the now discontinued, very coveted Yezu VX7R. This is supposed to be submersible in water. I'm very proud of this radio. I bought this one as a, as a new ham, I bought this. This is a, it's basically a two meter, 440. It's, it will handle analog. This is, I bought this back in 2004 as my very first. I didn't even know what I was doing. I'm like, I'm gonna buy myself a repeater radio. You know, something, a handheld. I bought the FT897 also. That covered all my HF and two meters. And this also my second, this is the second radio I ever bought. And I'm probably never going to sell this because it's discontinued. It's super awesome. So I was up in Chicago area and they had a very, very good weather net. And so when the storms came through, they had spotters all over the place. It was a big city. So there's like, there's about seven to nine million people in the area. So they had a very complex and very good area for spotters and storms in, in the area. So it was one of my, my first introductions to weather and listening so when there was a storm or tornado and there were tornadoes in the area this radio and uh in other repeaters they were the best information you could get so that's when i first started learning there was also an, an astronomy net where you could listen to astronomy stuff that there was all kinds of nets in the chicago area that was very interesting so two meters and that local thing was just a given so having a two meter um antenna on your house and having a two meter repeater and communications for local and your clubs and all that was just a given. To me, that's just a given, you should have that, okay? Now, fast forward to 2020. I had the chance to get a digital radio and you're like, okay, so that's more complicated, right? We got more problems, but, but you don't lose anything, all right? When you're doing digital, this also has analog. And so this, I got two radios now, one I traded for and one was given to me. And I put that in a video before, but 
Anyway, so you don't. So here's the thing about DMR or digital radio. There's other bra- there's other formats. There's D Star and all these others, but I chose DMR because that's just what was given to me. So just because you have a DMR radio, a digital radio, it doesn't mean you're going to throw everything else away. Okay, you still get analog. You still get all the same repeaters in these radios. You still get analog and you get digital. That's why I don't understand all these people that are so angry. They're like, oh, you're digital. I'm never watching you again. And I'm like, calm down, okay? I'm just adding, I'm just adding to what I already have. And let me tell you exactly why I'm adding to what I already have. So I did not have two meters. I had HF in my basement. I have this problem because my house and this office faces the street. And my street's right out here, and my backyard's out there. This is a problem because if I want to run an antenna, it's got to go that way and somehow all the way around the house and over there. And so I never wanted to do that because it's so long. I have to run like 80 feet of cable. That's why you see so many of my videos in the basement. From the basement, it's a lot shorter run to go HF that way. So I have everything in the basement. Okay, that's why I am where I am right now. So this radio they sent me, the TID radio, which I'm, I'm putting on, on put all the things in, in the description, everything you want to know. I got this. It's, it, it's both analog and, and digital. Okay, so there's one major digital channel in my area. Now, so all I had to do was get the software and then load it on my computer, download a code plug, and it just pushes everything to your radio, and, and you're done. It's that simple. Now, it's, it is complex. I swear, the first night I got this, I was very confused. But there's videos out there to help you. And I will also make videos to help you. So, you don't lose anything with digital, right? So, that's my big key point here. You, you keep everything you have, and then you add digital too. Now, why would you even want digital, right? Because it connects all the other repeaters in the whole world in theory. So let me boot this up right now and show you what I'm talking about. So I can connect. I do not have a hotspot. We're not going to talk about hotspots right now. That's totally separate and different. I have a repeater here that's connected to about nine different talk groups. These talk groups are connected worldwide over the internet, granted, to talk groups that are worldwide. They're countrywide, they're regional, like the Northeast America, they're statewide, they are citywide, they are local, okay? So you get these talk groups that are literally worldwide. Right now, I'm on the worldwide talk group on my local repeater out there. I don't have a hotspot. This is local. Listen. So this radio... After I programmed it on my computer, just sent my information out to that repeater. And it sent my call sign out and it connected to that repeater. And it said, it said, I'm here, I'm listening, so now I'm connected, okay? And it gets more complicated than that, but I will explain it to you. All right, we're on the worldwide call. Let's just call and just see what happens. I don't think anyone will be out there right now. It's pretty sparse on this network. But let's just see. N9YO listening on worldwide listening testing right now. So I just called out to my repeater that's pushing everything out to the worldwide network. And anyone out there that's listening worldwide can hear me. That's why I like this radio. Because you're not just on your repeater. It's your repeater plus everything else that's connected in the whole world. That's what makes it interesting. If I want to talk to the local area, I can go to that talk group and talk to my local area or the whole state or the whole region, or I can connect and connect and connect to different areas. So it's much bigger than your local repeater. That's why I like it. Am I going to throw away? Am I going to throw away my mountain topper and all my CW skills? No, I still love all this stuff. But in the winter, when it's cold, and I'm walking, and I'm walking outside, and I'm freezing cold, can I talk to somebody? Can I talk to somebody maybe in, 
in Europe? Yes, you can on this. That's what's so cool about it. It's your repeater plus all the others. That's what's so cool. It's more than, can you still talk to your local repeater? Yeah, let's go. Okay, they have what's called a parrot. So you can test it out. So if you want to, you want to kerchunk your repeater, you know, we all want to do that to see if we can hear it, right? So let's, let's just call parrot and it will tell me what, what I sound like. N9YO, listening, parrot, testing, parrot. N9YO, listening, parrot, testing, parrot. Okay, I like to have that channel on there just because I can test and see if I'm hitting or not. And it doesn't cost any, no one gets all mad at me for, for kerchunking the repeater. Believe me, that's happened before. I did it on a video and people got all mad at me, okay? So anyway, my argument for DMR is that it's your repeaters plus a lot more. Let's, okay, over here, over here I have the Anytone 578. Now, let me show you how you can do both yours and analog right now. Watch. So I'm about to go to what's called a talk group. And it's, it's this talk group which is separated in the software by everything analog. Okay? So now we've, we've, we've done in the software, it separates whatever you want to in groups. So you can group by city. If you're driving along and you want to be in this city, you just go to a different zone. If you want to be local, you just pick that that zone and you're local. If you're analog and you just want to be analog, just go to that zone. So I'm picking local analog. Listen. W0KE. I'm on analog right now, so it does digital and analog. You just have to choose the right channel. N9YO, listening on analog repeater 146130, listening. So you see you can do analog and digital. So if you don't even want to do digital, you can stick with analog. So anyway, my point is it's this plus that. And so all the people that are haters on digital... I don't understand why. You don't have to do digital. You can just add it to your repertoire, okay? It's it's this plus something else. That's why okay, so I'm so I'm I'm excited about DMR. When I got this radio here, I found a code plug and all that is is a file. And you pick your city and you basically download it and push it into this radio, which I'll show you how to do later. It has thousands of contacts, and it has all the local stuff. So when you pick your zone, you can pick a zone, and I pick my local zone. I picked uh, S. St. Louis. And so when it has thousands of contacts, it literally knows up until about six months ago how many people are out there. So when somebody keys up, almost everybody, unless they signed up within the last six months, I can see their name and call sign. I know exactly who they are and where they're from. Very, very interesting stuff. Anyway, this is my sell you on DMR or any other. You can do D-Star. I don't care what you do. But I'm excited about it. I am not abandoning my CW. I am not abandoning my favorite radio, which is probably this little guy, the Mountain Topper. I am not abandoning all my skill in CW. I'm still going to go camping. I'm still going to do HF. I'm still still going to do everything else. But this is my little this is my little DMR radio I have next to my computer and I like to listen to people all over the world. It's very interesting and it just adds to the hobby. That's my spiel and I hope you like it. I tell you what, and it's very cold today, although it isn't as windy as it was yesterday. We had about 50 mile an hour winds yesterday with really cold temperatures, so the sun's out, though, so that's a plus. we got snow on the ground here, so I, I envy you. That sounds great to me. Yeah, that sounds pretty darn cold. Uh, and uh, with that kind of wind, that's pretty miserable, John. But um, I'm, uh, I'm familiar with that white stuff. I, I grew up in Minnesota, 
spent a lot of time in Colorado and Upper Peninsula of Michigan and in Alaska even. So uh, I'm familiar with that white stuff. Uh, don't don't really mind it that much. Just uh, we don't get it down here. Uh, maybe once a year we'll get a little dusting uh, here in uh, in East Texas. Uh, but uh, you know we do get a fair amount of rain. The summers are hot and humid. Uh, lots of air conditioning time, but the fall, uh, winter, and springs are uh, are quite decent down here. Over. No, I uh, I've been down to El Paso. I was in the Sun Bowl, my gosh, many many years ago. I and I was down in Dallas. This will date me a little bit, but I was in Dallas, Texas, for the Cotton Bowl in 19. 19- Seventy-five, and that was the last time I was in Dallas. But I, I've heard Dallas has kind of grown up a little bit since 1975. But uh, yeah, that's great. Uh, what kind of a radio are you talking about? I'm going through our, our local repeater here, and I'm on a, a Motorola a handheld, a 6650 handheld, um, and I've just uh, done a firmware upgrade on a, a BTEC 6X2. So I was interested here. You say you were uh, programming a radio there too. I just had to reload the code plug and uh, updated the firmware and the uh, icon on the radio, and uh, just uh, got a got a successful completion. So I'm I'm happy that I'm through that and uh, got that updated over. Working on, uh, well, I'm talking to you on an Anytone 878. I really like these little radios. But uh, I, I belong to two different hand clubs. And one club last December when they had a drawing for a you know, Yezu uh, FT70. And that's a little radio that I'm trying to work on. Uh, I'm not talking on it right now. It's still, it's a work in progress. But yeah, that's. I tell you what, these old Anytones that I'm talking on, they're great radios, but boy, you gotta, you got to really have a lot of patience with the programming, that's for sure. Yeah, the 878 is a, a great radio from what I, I read. Uh, the VTEC 6X2 has started out uh, as an Anytone 868 board, I understand, and then... Uh, uh, VTEC uh, added some additional firmware to it to do some additional things and now they just upgraded their firmware again to uh, add uh, more button options. Uh, uh, I think it can do a simplex repeat. It uh, it does uh, cross the zone scanning. I'd already did that. I'm not even sure what all of the, uh, the updates in the firmware are. I've got to uh, go reread the uh, the README file and see what all they, they updated on it. Uh, they, there was a couple of bug fixes in there they, they fixed. But uh, I really like it. It's it's a good uh, radio. Um, and I like it that it, it'll handle uh, 200,000 of, of the uh, DMR IDs. The, uh, the Motorola's are good solid radios, but they're limited on uh, number of DMR IDs they'll hold and uh, number of um, talk groups in a zone. So that uh, you know, you can only you can only scan so many dock groups. Uh, so there, it, it's limited, but it is a a great uh, solid uh, radio with with good sounding audio. Uh, I always get good reports on it, uh, uh, John. Over.